Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Trader Merlin Show. It is your... What day are we on? Is it Tuesday? It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's right. It can only be Wednesday because I have Brandon Wendell on the program here a little bit after I do my walkthrough of the top seven markets out though. So pretty happy to have Brandon joining us for the second time on Trader Merlin. Last time we did a little bit of a profile. This time we're going to just talk straight markets. So I already have a couple questions lined up. If you guys have some questions you want Brandon and I to answer, type those into the chat on our YouTube channel. Of course, that's going to be under Trader Merlin. Or you can go to email directly, which is going to be at Trader Merlin or Trader Merlin at Gmail or go to TraderMerlin.com. Just Trader Merlin somewhere you will find how to get in touch with me. All right, a great day out there. I have to gloat. Normally uh, with trading, it's not about gloating, but there are certain milestones you achieve, like having your first six-figure trading day or five-figure trading or even a two-figure trading day, depending on who you are. Uh, today was one of those days. You guys know that in the past few days, I've been telling you that I was short the S&P. My average price was 2601. I closed out those S&P short futures today at a price of 2472 and a half, which is the single biggest. I, I haven't had a triple digit S&P day. Today was pretty awesome. So close with a 130 point winner on the S&P. Unbelievable. And then, of course, you regret it because the market's still drifting down. Let's start off with those markets drifting down with our worst performer out there today. We will talk uh, market update. Let's get into it. Starting with that 10 year product. The 10 year was by far your worst performer. When I say worst, you're looking at 9% down on the yield to 6.35 or 0.635 for the yield there. You notice the small little green candle today. Again, that's inching its way back up to those highs that we saw on March 9th. Again, that'd be about 1.5 on the 10 years. So I do think we'll end up getting there and we'll see these yields continue to drop, which means that 10 year continue to rally up. That was number seven. Number six brings us to the Russell 2000, the RTY futures contract. Pretty ugly, did not look so good out there today. Big red candle dropping down to uh, 1,068 right now. That's where we're closed at for the Russell right now. That's a slide of over 7%, uh, 81 point slide for the Russell 2000, which puts it deep into sixth place. Now we move a little bit higher, uh, I guess just slightly higher with the S&P 500, about 3% better. S&P was down to 2470, a 4.41% slide. Again, 114 point drop for the S&P 500 today. Um, and technically we looked at this yesterday. It had a lot of potential from a sell-off perspective because that smacking its head right against that uh, 2600 mark. And it, it, it certainly fell right through there today. So good job for the S&P shorts. I am currently out of my S&P. I am still holding crude oil long, but we'll talk about that when I get to crude oil at the end of this. All right, that was uh, number four. Number three brings us to cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. Not doing so hot, but still a little bit better than some of these indexes. Actually, I'm leapfrogging. I forgot your NASDAQ, but we'll get to that. 6,346 is where Bitcoin closed at today, down 2.37%. But you'll notice the hook at the end. Literally the last couple of hours, it's given or recouped some of those losses. So getting a little bit better here as we progress in our last 24 hours for cryptos. All right, let's go back to the NASDAQ 100, which was number four. I skipped that one. NASDAQ composite to 7,360, slide of 4.41%. Basically equal to what you had out there with the S&P 500. A drop of 339 points and you'll notice yesterday we talked about that spike up to 8,000. It was five points shy of 8,000 on the NASDAQ 100 and we follow through today. Now the question becomes how low will it go? Certainly that'll be something that Brandon and I will talk about here shortly. Number two on the list brings us to GC Gold. Finally a little bit of an up move. I was surprised. Uh, it, it seems to be struggling here recently and I thought you'd have the risk off approach and gold soaring. Gold on the day up 0.23% closing at 1600. Right now it's at 1602 which gives it a gain of less than a quarter of a percentage point. So at least it's not falling. All right. Number one on the day brings us to crude oil. Here is your CL. Crude oil on the day, 2143 is where it's at at this exact second. That's a, a, a little bit higher than the numbers I'm going to give you. Uh, when it closed, it was at 2104, which is a gain of 2.73%. So my guess is we're probably somewhere in the vicinity of 3.5% on the day for crude oil. Even though the picture doesn't look that great, it's still bottoming right around that $20 mark on the daily chart here and right now you're at 2140 for crude oil which makes it your number one performer for your market update and hopefully some of that puts some green into your pocket all right now i mentioned i've been working with some technology to hopefully get things back up here in the studio so where i can actually have some guests on the show and I'm, I'm my fingers are crossed this goes off without a hitch and i'm going to rely on uh, a lot of you viewers out there today to give me some feedback. Of course, I, I can't see the viewers chat out there, which I normally get to see. I will go to the page here and find that here shortly. Um, what I am hoping for is that you guys, uh, why do I not see anybody participating? Huh. 
All right. Uh, what I'm hoping is that you guys will hear the audio. If you don't hear it right, you got to let me know and let me know if things are not working properly. So we'll start it off with this. All right. There, I've got Brandon Wendell on the phone today. He's on Skype. Brandon, how are you doing out there? He's going to use his microphone. Hey, there we go. Yeah, sorry, I had my microphone on mute. <laughs> Look, I love the bow tie. I saw It's funny because I saw as I was talking, you were working to get that bow tie all fixed up. I did. I, you know, I figured yeah, you guys all know me for the bow tie, and I was dressed casual because, you know, quarantine and all. I don't. I mean, I did shower. I am wearing pants. Thank you. But I realized that it, <laughs> not that you care. You can't see it. But uh, anyway, I decided I had to have the bow tie, so I just ran out real quick. And, uh, and it is a real bow tie. I did tie it real quick, as Merlin said. You saw it on the last show. I was tying it, so just threw it on. I got the wrong shirt on for it, but that's okay. It's all right. Matter. So walk, what's the hat? Because normally you have a Philly hat on. What, what, what's the clover there? Yeah. It's the well. It's my good luck charm. You know, my good luck hat. So uh, it's my lucky hat here. Okay, cool. Um, so they call it the, the black clover. Yeah. Uh, anyway. There you go. All right. Well, we we like it. <laughs> we like we like the. Um, I'll, I'll say the abnormalities that we don't have to wear our normal attire anymore. We can kind of wear what what we like to wear, which uh, is definitely a change of pace. So I'm pretty happy about that. As you can see, this is the most mellow shirt I have worn all week. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm used to seeing you all dressed up as well. So yeah, no, I haven't shaved. I have showered, but I'm not wearing pants. But the viewers don't need to worry about that. It's it's part of the yeah. Trey Merlin show. It's our novel approach yeah. to it. And you're trying to get people to come into your studio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brandon, yeah. today the top of topic was quarantined with Brandon Wendell. Finally, tech, uh, Florida decided to get with the times and and confine you guys to your home. So now you're stuck in there. You can just watch the uh, the remnants of spring break uh, walk by your house. Uh, what are you doing right now? What's going on in your world? Well, I've just been trading, actually. I did uh, an XLT this morning. Got a, Actually, got a, I might as well say it. I got a, kind of an exciting announcement. Uh, I'm going to be doing a couple new things here. And um, let's see. I, can I go ahead and share my desktop with you real quick? Uh, sure. Go for it. Since, uh, let me go ahead and uh, let's see. There we go. Share screen. And that way you don't have to look at my ugly mug. You can actually look at a chart here. But... Uh, what I'm going to do is, I was let me see if I got it up here somewhere. There it is. Uh, I got a brand new thing I'm going to be doing. So I just wanted to share this with everybody. This is the first announcement that I'm making. I haven't told anybody else yet except for you. Uh, well, the wife knows and the dogs too. But uh, here, let me just go ahead and share this with you. I'm uh, going to be taking over something called the E Mini Think Tank. Ooh, and right. uh, yeah, so I'm going to be dealing with the futures markets, trading all different types of futures. I'm going to be working with a company called Wealth Builders HQ. Right there is the logo. Um, you know, this is just kind of something I threw together, uh, actually not for this specifically, but for something else I was doing. But, um, basically what I'm going to be doing is a live online workshop, basically similar to what I've been doing before. And by the way, I'm still doing my, uh, my XLTs as well, but this is going to be something new where I'm going to be doing Mondays in the evenings for two hours, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays during the day from 9am to 11am. And they're going to be online recorded courses that uh, we're trading and looking at the live markets. I'll be doing a simulated trading account there just to make it easy for everyone. But uh, live market action as it happens. So, uh, you know, just kind of a little teaser there. This is what I'm going to be doing now going forward. And you'll be able to get some more, well, three hours or sorry, two hours a day, three days a week of trading with me, which would be kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, Basically, I'm going to be doing a free workshop for anybody who's interested in doing it. You can email me. you got my email address there. I'm not positive, but I do believe that link should work. I haven't tested it yet, but uh, hopefully it works. <laughs> we'll um, find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's not working yet, so I just clicked on it. But they're going to get that up and running pretty soon. So cool. and, until then, you know, if you want to get more information, just go ahead and shoot me an email, bwendell.cmt at gmail.com. And I'll get you an invite for that free workshop. I'm going to be doing two of them, probably doing more than just that. But it's April 7th, and that'll be at noon to 1 on Eastern, and then April 8th, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern, if you want to go to a free workshop and get some more info about what I'm going to be doing and see kind of my style. So yeah. anyway, enough of that. Yeah, um, no, it's great. Uh, I'm yeah. glad you're. I'm glad it's it's interesting because we've had, um, you know, hundreds of instructors at Online Trading Academy, and a lot of them, you know, because of this whole FTC thing, are forced to say, you know what, okay, uh, I'm a trader. I'm going to go out and do some other things, and it's great to see you taking some yeah. initiative. I'm taking it as well, but you're probably going to get paid for yours. Mine is just a voluntary thing. I, I just love the show so much. I'm <laughs> I'm doing it out of goodness of my heart, I guess. At some point, hopefully, I'll get to monetize. Well, I'm sure this we'll, one. we'll we'll probably get you some advertisers and maybe a GoFundMe or something, right? Because uh, people <laughs> no, love no, you. They love trading, your information. My trading is enough to sustain it for right now, but at some point, hey, that's awesome. Steps, by the way, congratulations on that too. Yeah, thanks. Um, have you ever had a hundred point S and P day? I mean, they're so rare. No, I, personally, no. I've never caught a hundred point runner on a on a one day. No, in a day. Uh, yeah, it, so, it literally was from no. last night through this afternoon. I was just going. I you know woke up, had some stops in place. I went, are you kidding me? Was... Anyway, all right, <laughs> uh, one awesome. of those good days. 
So you're a futures guy. You trade pretty much everything out there. I guess we could start off with... Um, I have had a couple listener questions, and I feel bad because I haven't been able to get to their questions directly, but uh, this guy, Trade Trending on Twitter, sent me one. He wants to know about XAU, XAU USD, or we could just look at gold. Uh, oh, and yep. and Stephen, Stephen Nickel also wants to know about silver. So how about we start off just looking at some of the commodity side of things. I know you can share your screen over there with our viewers, so I'll, I'll make that full screen for everybody. Um, you, you want to pick one of those to begin with, and maybe you and I can Oops. go back and forth on analysis on gold and silver? Yeah, sure. Whatever you like. Uh, I got gold. I just called up real quick here. So we'll go ahead and start off with that. And I think I am sharing my screen. There we go. Uh, so looking at the big picture, I mean, everybody wants to know what's going to happen with everything. Uh, unfortunately, my crystal ball broke a long time ago, so I just got <laughs> the charts to look at. But uh, <laughs> uh, looking at those charts, you see big jumps back and forth. This is the weekly chart, guys. I mean, look how choppy that is back and forth. Overall, we're still relatively bullish. And that's what I'm seeing with the RSI not going dipping into the bearish territory. But as far as trade opportunities, you really got to pick your battles here with this volatility. So uh, going into like a daily chart, we just came off of the recent highs. Uh, I'm not seeing any great entry opportunities. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Not on this. So I agree. in order to reduce risk, yeah, in order to reduce risk, I'm going to go to lower time frames. So maybe even down to the hourly time frame. Now we're starting to see some stuff we might be able to, to play around with. Uh, first of all, before I do that hour, let me check that four hour again just for the trend. On the four hour, it was a bit bearish. Uh, as you can see, we're starting to pull back just a little bit, not too much, uh, with the higher low. So what I was noticing, again, like I said, it's a bit bearish on the four hour. So on the one hour, I noticed a nice supply zone just up ahead. Uh, right here, you got a rally base drop area. And we're looking at about 1620.60 to 1629.50. Um, really, I got to go ahead and let's see what the open price there. Twenty point three. So let me fix that. Twenty point three. There it is. Like accuracy, that matters. So there's an area of supply on the hourly chart. I'm possibly going to watch for a short opportunity. Believe it or not, selling on gold. But again, it's so okay. choppy that I want to go to smaller time frames. Even this, you're looking at what nine points. So it's a nine hundred dollar risk on gold just there on right. an hourly chart. So. You know, it's yeah. a tough one. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal the screen over here and see if I can go. go uh, no, you can keep yours there. You can keep yours there. I okay. actually have a. Uh, I can go to my screen. It's just I love that I have mission control over here because I'm on click right now doing the same analysis. And I, I agree with Brendan. I think what's important here is if you look at that daily chart, there really isn't. You you couldn't look at the daily and say this is a time to buy or this is a time to sell. There, there's just nothing there that would warrant it. I mean, look at these candles, but. Um, I liked to I looked looking at the the one hour time frame here. I like that one. Um, certainly, if you're looking at buying into this, which I would be a net buyer of gold personally. I, I maybe as a short term day trader, yeah, you could look at shorting it. But I still think that gold's going to be that risk off longer term. So any sort of swing or position, um, and you know, you yeah, guys, I agree with you on that one. Yeah, right. Uh, I think you're yeah. really looking at something down around fifteen hundred as a buy point personally. I don't think it's going to get there. Um, I'll show you why if I put a line on the screen here. We'll just put a line at 1500 to the daily here. That would be a pretty significant drop in the price of gold. Um, to get all the way back down there, I just I just don't see it happening. I think that this is a short-term sell-off here. So, you know, you might have to be looking on, on your hourly or 15-minute time frames for some shorter-term demand to buy into. But uh, I think that uh, you're more likely to see some upside movement out there for the gold. Yeah, I think I got to agree with you on that. The longer term, it's definitely looking more to the upside. Um, so, but like I said, on the day trading side, there's some pullbacks we can definitely trade. Uh, however, on the longer, on the big picture, yeah, I would say definitely looking for the uh, the long because you know I don't think we're done in the market crash and right. everything that's going on with the recession. I think that it's definitely uh, we're in it for the little bit longer term here. So I think gold's a definitely a buy play. Same thing with silver. I was actually looking at that in one of the XLTs this morning. And um, let's see here, do I have my silver's futures? I know you're kind of controlling everything there, but uh, oh, I did, no. by the way, I had that. Oh, your screen's okay. full the, screen, so whatever you're showing up now is, is going to be there. Okay. So. Yeah, I had the gold there too, by the way. The demand zone on the short term is 1568.40. Actually, let's do this. And there you go. I can zoom in as well. Are my charts cooler than Merlin's charts or what? Ooh. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> chart battle. Uh, so there's my demand zone I was just talking about. And uh, going into silver, I mean, we should see a pretty similar picture. So let's yep. go SI. And again, starting off big picture, just a big mess altogether. So we did have that big, big pullback on silver. Now, I think silver is going to be a little bit less of a safety play compared to um, 
gold because you also have the, the practical application of silver in mm -hmm. manufacturing and electronics, things like that. So uh, with the slowdown, obviously, the demand goes down quite a bit. It obviously will move with gold, but maybe not to the same velocity to, uh, velocity to the upside there. And uh, yeah, as far as daily, it's so choppy. It's just hard to pick a good entry spot anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the middle of that upward correction of our downward impulse. And I'm curious now, playing around with my Fibonacci's here as well. Did we actually hit a Fibonacci extension? And no, we didn't. No, not yet. No, I was trying to see on that last move if we did, but I don't really have any great entries here in the larger time frame, so I got to play the smaller time frames. Uh, if anything, on the daily, I'm seeing a demand on silver here, but that's way down at uh, 12,385 to 11,640. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, let me ask you this question. This came in from uh, from Brandon, one of our regulars. So Brandon to Brandon. Um, yeah. <laughs> how do you deal with the chop on futures? Uh, he says, I usually just resort to options. You know, we have been seeing market moves that, honestly, I haven't seen since 2008. When you look and you see that the average daily ATR for the S and SPX is running about 150 points, that's just straight up nuts, considering it was 25 points in January. So... It's a different market dynamic. It's a different amount of volatility. How do you deal with that? Dealing with volatility? Well, just, just, uh, just the amount of I, choppiness and volatility. Yeah, I mean, the most you can, the best thing you can do is go to smaller time frames. Obviously, you can limit your size and go to smaller size contracts or mini or micro contracts, and that's an easier thing to do deal with because there is just so much volatility. So mm -hmm. either uh, you mentioned futures and uh, sorry options, and there are options on the futures markets. So you can definitely trade those. Uh, that's going to limit your risk in a certain manner because you, if you're on the buy side, you can't lose more than the premium you put in, which is great. Uh, but again, I'm, I love to trade the futures itself. So on the futures, you just uh, lower your contract size, lower your time frame, or lower the type of contract by going to the minis and micros. I mean, when it comes down to risk management, which is something we all need to practice is proper risk management, I'll draw it on my chart here. There's really only three things you could do. So let me take off that. Hang on a second. You're going to fix this. There we go. So... When it comes to risk management, here you go. Risk management. There's getting only three ready, things. Get ready for those lessons. There comes the there lesson number one. <laughs> the professor is in. I got to straighten the bow tie. There we go. So there's only three things that we can control, and the only thing we can control is how much we're going to lose if we're wrong. So number yep. one is size. And again, that's going to be the type, either minis or micros. And for everybody out there, it doesn't matter. I mean, right now we're talking about the futures markets, but let's be clear. The single greatest thing you can do from a risk management perspective is control your share size. If you're a Forex trader, that's the number of lots. If it's, you're an options trader, it's the number of contracts. If you're equity, it's the number of shares. Go down to one share if you have to because commissions are free nowadays. So that's the, the single greatest thing you can do to manage your risk. He's got up there is size. All right. Number two yep. on the list, duration. Is Walk us through Duration. That. Yep. Length of the trade. So we've been kind of discussing this already, but it's the length of the trade, and that's going to be a feature of the uh, time frame you used. So the higher time frame you go to, the more risk you're going to have, obviously. You have bigger, bigger zones further away for your stops. Um, and the lower time frame you go to, less risk you have. So that's the, ne the next thing. And the number three is going to be uh, frequency of trades. Mm-hmm. I'll just say frequency, and that is the number of trades you take. It the more selective you are, the more likely you are to take better trades. And if you are not very selective, then you're probably taking any trade that comes around, and they're, you're probably going to take some losing trades. Sure. So I mean, we we got to kind of balance that out. It should be N U M B E R. I can't type today, but um, you know, the number of trades we take is uh, going to be less when we have a lot of chop because we want to be very selective and make sure we only take the best opportunities. So that's definitely something there. You know, those three things there, let me uh, let me add my two cents on this one. Everybody has to understand that there's a, a specific style that you will gravitate towards. I prefer day trading just because I don't trust the markets. I don't trust people. I don't trust banks. I, I just don't trust anybody, which is probably why I'm single. Um, that... that <laughs> <laughs> that makes me inherently want to be a shorter term trader. So if you look at these three things that Brandon has written on the screen, which is size, frequency, and duration, I, I set them out of order, um, I instantly have to look at number two and say, as a day trader, my duration is going to be much shorter term. So while somebody like uh, a Steve Missick, for example, might be looking for a trade that could last three months, his goal might be to have a 150 point target, where I might have like a 50 cent target or half a point target. So in order to make those things work, that shorter term guy is generally going to have to be trading bigger share size to compensate. 
this is one of the challenges with a lot of day traders and short-term guys is they go in there and instead of trying to make a full point over, let's say, a week, they're trying to make a dime in the next hour or two. Now they bump up to a much bigger share size and that generally gets people in trouble. And I just want to throw that out there because as yeah. you understand your style, you have to understand the risks and rewards to each one. And you definitely know about compensation, so. Yep. <laughs> uh, ha, ha. All right, By the way, so, I got my. So you I did are, get my. Uh, go ahead. I, know, I wanted to throw in real quick, uh, going back to what I was talking about earlier with my uh, kind of my new uh, my new venture, uh, just because I can real quick. I just want to show you that um, I did get the the link fixed. It's Bitly. It's we just did a Bitly uh, type of um, web browser. So if I could real quick, let me just make sure I got this right. Yeah, Bitly. Okay, E Minis Max. So if you're interested in joining that quick um, free webinar that I'm going to be doing next week. There it is. That's the link right there. So it's bit.ly. It's a bit.ly one. So bit.ly forward slash eminis max. You can go to that and you can enroll in that free workshop we're going to be doing uh, next week on the 7th and 8th and get some more information there. So anyway, nice. moving on. Let's take a cool. look at some more charts. Yeah. Um, there's some people typing in different platforms that they like. And I actually, I, yeah. I, do, I have to back people up on this. And um, you mentioned that you like Trade Pro Futures. I am a big fan of Trade Pro Futures as well. Uh, I know the guy who started that many, many years ago. He actually was the chief technical officer at Online Trading Academy's trading floor in Southern California, one of the most honest, straight shooting guys I've ever met in my life, Trey Lazera. Uh, he runs Trade Pro Futures, just a great guy yep. out there. So uh, I'm a fan as well. Um, let's see. So we, we looked at gold. We looked at silver. Here's one that's a little bit different. And I know that we were going to stick with um, futures today, but let's talk whatever. Let's talk about weed. Let's talk about pot for a second. Um, <laughs> I'm going to bring up my screen. I will bring up MJ. Now this is an ETF that represents uh, a bunch of different cannabis companies. We have some participants here today that are very, very engaged in the cannabis industry. It has been ugly to say the least. And by the way, somebody just requested that I use white charts and I change it back to white for you. Um, there you go. Brenda, we've, we've seen this market and, and you're a technical guy. So having a CMT doesn't matter what this is. It's basically saying, let's identify the chart prices and patterns. You know, back in November, October of last year, this thing was over 40 bucks as an ETF, oh, yeah. as a basket. It dipped all the way down to lows of around eight bucks and change. What's your take on MJ at this point, if you even have one? Well, right now, the only thing going higher are the consumers, apparently. But, but, uh, <laughs> because this is an essential it. business, apparently. It's it's medical. You have to keep them open. It's great. <laughs> well, that's true. It's true. But yeah. uh, definitely a bearish trend, obviously, seeing on the de the daily chart there. It's just gotten whacked and uh, drop and drop and drop. And sorry, I'm kind of keeping an eye on some of this, too. Uh, the chats there are going through. And obviously, we don't have any demand down here. But I'm not seeing any reason to start buying this. You know, looking at the mm -hmm. weekly chart of the ETF – what I would look for is some sort of sign that the bearish momentum is dying, and I'm not getting that. And the sign I would typically look for is when prices are making fresh lows like this, you want to see what's called a positive divergence. And the positive divergence would come with lower lows in price but higher lows in the indicator. And it's not happening. We're getting more momentum, not less. Mm -hmm. So without some sort of a signal, there's no reason to buy into this. Uh, could it go to zero? Yes. Will it? Probably not. We'll end up going sideways for a bit, but I don't see any reason why it is an essential business. Uh, I mean, it's it's booming in uh, in most states in the U.S. and across the world, really. So I don't know why it's been beaten up so much uh, other than it's dropping with the broad markets. But a fundamental reason for this, I really don't have one. Yeah. From a technical reason, yeah, I'm not going to touch this thing until I see some sort of signal of strength or at least uh, – a weakness in the downtrend right and we don't have it you just don't have it yeah you can keep that chart there so i won't switch back and forth all the time um okay. you guys are looking at brandon's uh chart of of mj the etf uh for cannabis companies um you know going back to a statement about finding the right time to buy i agree I, i'm not a buyer right now either um and there's a couple different ways to view it brandon was looking for maybe divergences in the actual uh, indicator on rsi at the bottom there or price with price I'm looking for a couple of different things, and I personally would use that as a secondary piece, as we talked about yesterday with the indicators show. What I would be looking for with this one is actually a decision point right now. If MJ comes down and breaks that $8 and something low that you see right there on the bottom of the screen, then I'm staying out, you know, just let it drop. If for some reason it stabilizes there and starts to have a little bit of a recovery, I may be interested. Once it gets back above that $12 mark and shows it's starting to make some new highs, then I'm definitely interested because the downtrend may have ceased. If I can do that in conjunction with some of the indicators, like Brandon's using RSI here, 
then that gives a little extra validity to my trade and then I'd be much more confident going in. But you can't fight that trend on MJ right now. It looks appallingly bad. They can reverse split this if they want so it can continue to go much lower. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I was going to show you is right here, I got to get those indicators, uh, the text out of the way, but uh, the thing I'm looking for is right here. When you see prices are moving down and making fresh lows like this, but the indicator is not, right here you can see they lost the bearish momentum and that's what led to this pullback in price so if we can start seeing something like that maybe on the weekly chart then it'd be a long-term buyer what you just said was really the trend changing if we come down right. and we make a higher low we don't break this prior low around the 888 and then we make a higher high, well, obviously we're in an uptrend and then it's time to buy again. So yeah, I don't need to pick the absolute low or absolute high on anything as long as I capture the majority of the move and that's the trend. So I'm kind of with you on that too. Not touching until we get those higher highs and higher lows. Yeah, so there you go. We had uh, an MJ question. I'm looking through the email right now. I don't see any fresh questions coming in on individual security, so we'll, we'll keep it at that. Um, for the viewers out there that are watching the show right now, is there something that you would like to see? I'm actually kind of scrolling through here. I see, um, it's not a futures product, but Austin is asking about Altria, Philip Morris. Uh, so maybe we can bring up MO. And while Brandon brings that one up on his platform, let me just say something that's an observation about the situation that we're in. We are all now getting extended times where we are going to be stuck at home on quarantine. I don't know how long that's going to be. And boy, you would think that cannabis companies might be doing really well. Um, <laughs> and if you have an Instagram account or any of these... I've watched so many people putting little updates of themselves and they're just sitting in their house playing video games with plates of food on the table. Back when I was a pretty big stoner in college, that's what my house looked like, you know, video games, plates of food and a bong on the table. Nowadays, um, you know, I, I, we have to be professionals and work, but a lot of people working from home. So I would think that actually marijuana stocks at some point here might start to show some pretty good earnings as a lot of people are working from home. Yeah, and even Phil Morris here, Altria, uh, when you take a look at this weekly chart right now, it's showing more weakness, which normally uh, Philip Morris is going to be a defensive stock. That that would be on the defensive side where the markets crash. People don't stop using these products. They continue to use them. And somebody's asking about this right now. Oh, actually, we had a comment there. What was it? Medic said that uh, – uh, I got to see where it was. He yeah, said all going the, up in smoke. <laughs> yeah, the, all the marijuana stocks are going up in smoke. Uh, but you see, right here we had a divergence, like I was talking about. We did never, we never made the higher high though, and that's the indicator for the trend. But there's a divergence which led us to the move back up for the correction. Our current move down, as you can see, is not doing that. We're making lower lows still. So yeah. that is suggesting that we've got more room to go to the downside. This is not done. Yep. which is very unusual, like I said. In this kind of market environment, typically Johnson & Johnson, Kimberly Clark, Philip Morris, these are all securities that usually do well in a bearish market because they're a flight to safety. These are products that we always use. Uh, right now, you're also seeing a little bit of a spike in some of the things, uh, online delivery products or even Zoom, You know, where people are doing online meetings. It's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Laura's mentioning something about crude oil. We've been talking back and forth on email too about this. Uh, let's see. Oh, so there's a uh, possible agreement going on so she's want to know what's going on about crude oil as well so uh -huh. we can take a look at that but another market altogether but yeah i mean right now this is a very unusual market where even the safety valves are not acting like that uh they're, everything's dropping i mean it's a global meltdown but you know i got some theories behind that oh valuations definitely don't matter i don't even care i'm a technical guy i don't care about what a company does i'll trade it long or short anyway but yeah uh, um I, it's funny, yeah. I, I only have uh, restrictions on it because of what's happened to me in the past. So the viewers know uh, I'm not allowed to trade biotechs or pharmaceuticals. And Brandon's right. You should really, who cares what they do? They can make nuclear bombs or toilet paper. It doesn't make a difference if you're trading the price chart. I have just been burned by those companies a few too many times where it's like, you know what? There's plenty else for me to choose. So no biotechs, no pharmaceuticals, no Cisco, and no Apple. That's pretty much my list out there. Um Let's see. Uh, Laura, the Saudi Arabia press today stated that President Trump got Saudi and Russia to agree to a three-way call regarding oil. If this is successful, oil will fly. Maybe. Um, crude oil is a, is a lot of cash. What do you think about uh, USO leaps? So long-term USO. First off, let's just let's bring up CL and break it apart there yeah. and see what you think. Well, I'm on the weekly chart right here at crude oil. and I mean, we're reaching way, way down for these prices we haven't seen these prices in over 10 years i mean we're going back what yeah. was that 17 years ago basically is what we're coming down to some of these areas these buy zones here down man that's crazy it's crazy back in 2002 yeah. 2003 i got made fun of many years ago because i was on cnbc and i called for crude oil to go down to 27 dollars, and it did and then when i got there i said oh it's probably gonna go down to 11 and it didn't so everybody made fun of me but now it looks like it might 
Uh, <laughs> but what I see right here on the weekly chart is there's our buying area. Actually, let's clean up my chart here for a second and get back to this. Uh, but we've got right here our buying area, uh, 2182, 2030, that we're pretty much in right now. And if we break that, which is a possibility, let's see. Yep. Where are we right now? I just want to check that. Yeah, we're, we're trying to violate that, and we've got so much bearish activity there. There was a really good spread opportunity. I do a lot of future spread trading, too. Uh, there's been some spread opportunities where crude oil was moving too fast in comparison to gasoline. So that was an opportunity that I tweeted out. If you're not following me on Twitter, I can post uh, my Twitter is at TraderBDub. You can follow me there, too. But uh, anyway, yeah, looking for the next level of demand here, we're going all the way back down to about $12, $11. There's mm -hmm. nothing else along the way here that I'm seeing. So I'm bringing my chart back to that time, and there it is. You've got uh, 1228, 1130. Whew. So that actually may be a retest of this prior area, but we're going back to well, hey, look, it's 1999. We're going to party like it's 99. Bust out the Prince <laughs> music. Let's do it. Um, so, yeah, I don't see anything uh, holding us up. So I'm, the, I'm sorry. The question was long term. Long term, Should yeah. we be looking at some USO leaps? And with crude oil continuing to melt down like this, yeah, I, we could look at possible opportunities long term on USO. Uh, if you're looking at buying a leap, one of the things that I would possibly do in order to generate some income on that is maybe even create kind of a calendar type spread where uh, you buy the long term leap out of the money, maybe create, uh, you know, buy it cheap, but then go ahead and sell. Uh, some options against it to pay for it in the meantime, which is kind of a good opportunity. And that might be great because crude oil is never going to go to zero. Right. I mean, there's still going to be something done to prop it back up at some point. So if you can buy an out of the money leap, um, you know, somewhere, I don't even know, I wouldn't speculate on the price you want to buy, but even if you bought it at $6 out of the money, you can sell options against that call that you're buying. And by the time you actually get up to $6 or more, you're already in profit at that point. Yeah. I, I think for, for Laura out there, I think it's probably a good a good thing. I think going long-term leaps is probably going to be good. Uh, you guys have heard my comments many times that the, the cost of production for U.S., we're already below that price right now. For Russia and Saudi Arabia, I don't know offhand the, the cost of production out there for them, but certainly the lower it goes, the less money they have to run their infrastructure and, and capital systems because that's what they're dependent on. We're not dependent on it from a functioning perspective of our economy. They are. So as soon as that gets lower and lower, it's just strangling their economy. So it's interesting to see Trump set this one up. I don't know. I think that they, I'm pretty sure they were talking to each other before that. Um, but it could very easily have a big spike back to the upside. All that has to happen is Saudi Arabia has to say, we're cutting production because of coronavirus, and all of a sudden, boom, you're back at 60 bucks. But, you know, who knows what will happen or if that's going to happen and how it happens. I do think you'll see oil rally back up, and that's just my thing. So I, I actually currently am long calls on USO for October. Those were high flyers I bought when it was like 6 bucks, uh, and I have $9 calls. So they're probably going to expire worthless, okay. but I'll keep them all the way through expiration. Well, like I said, I mean, yeah, and, and Brendan was even commenting that's awesome. You can actually sell against those calls mm -hmm. that you own and generate income anyway. So even if it expires completely worthless, you still make a profit on the trade. Uh, what I did in my chart real quick was just kind of showing you uh, this is what's called a spread chart. And what I'm doing is, I was mentioning this earlier, I'm actually showing the difference in price between crude oil and gasoline because there's a little bit of a disconnect between the refined product and the raw product. And what you can do in this is, well, first of all, you reduce your margins dramatically when you do mm -hmm. spread. So one of the issues we were talking about, the volatility that's out in the markets right now, and you know the margins are ridiculous. I mean, you want to buy an ES and hold it overnight, good luck. It's about 13 grand right now. But if you do an intraday, I'm sorry, intra market spread where you buy the ES the futures and you sell the ES at the same time but different months, you can reduce your margin cost to under a thousand bucks. So this particular trade, instead of trading crude oil outright, uh, I was doing this on the daily chart, and again I posted the tweet about this. But what we have is right here. This was the trade where crude oil was overpriced, believe it or not, in comparison to gasoline. So at the same time, you'd be doing two trades. You would, well, it's really one trade altogether. But what you do is you sell crude oil and you buy gasoline, which the futures are RB for that one. So by doing the two of them together, what happens is you are creating a spread and you profit when the line goes down. So we're overbought. We had a negative divergence, okay? And the margin for this, instead of the normal contract being, I think it was about, uh, it's a little bit, about 4,500, we'll call $5,000 for crude oil and another seven grand for gasoline. Total cost in this was about 60, I'm sorry, 4,600 bucks. Now, when it moved down to the average, the midpoint right here, because again, you had the signal of the divergence, you were overbought on the 
uh, Bollinger Band up there. And when it came back in, you made about $1,600 profit. And the entry for the trade was the 23rd or 24th, I forget the exact date. Uh, yeah, 24th. And the exit was just the other day on the 30th. So in that time, that was a nice rate of return, $1,600 yeah. on a $4,600 investment. And you were protected, even if both of them went against you, as long as the spread didn't widen more, which it was likely not to do, you still made profits. Yeah. So I, you know, it's, I know it's something that's a little bit more esoteric for a lot of people. They have no idea what the future spreads are about, but it, it's really, really neat. Instead of going out, I'll just show you a quick example. ES, if you do the ESM 2020, that's the S&P futures, they're dropping right now. Again, if you want to short that, go for it, but you got the overnight margin. However, instead, you can trade ESM 2020 minus ESU 2020. And what you do here is you are selling that same futures contract, the S&P futures, but for the June contract, so sell ESM20, and at the same time you buy the September contract. So it would be ESU20, and your margins get reduced to, I'm not kidding, it drops down to, uh, actually I can tell you exactly how much it is, but it's ridiculously low for holding overnight. So if I go to CME group, Real quick, hopefully this won't take too long, but I just want to kind of demonstrate one of the things you can do to reduce risk is learn different styles of trading as well. And spread trades are probably one of the safest ways of trading. I'll just get a quote on any security, it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah, where are my contract specs? Come on now. I was trying to make this easy, but it's definitely not trying to be easy here. There we go, full contract specs. And we're going to do something called intra-market spread. Again, selling the futures for the June contract and then buying the September contract. And watch this. When I go to intra-market spread, I'm talking too fast for my computer. It's not keeping up. <laughs> everyone's, on, everyone's working from home, man. The internet's been slow, so it's crazy. Oh, I know, I know. I'm getting my fiber optic yeah. installed Friday. I'm pretty happy about that. Cool, your porn will stop uh, breaking up in the middle of the video, right? <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, right here, there's the intra-market spread margin, and we've got a maintenance margin being shown right here for this. Uh, let's see, control Z, there it is, 500 bucks. So the initial margin to be able to hold two contracts on the S&P, one long, one short, would only be $550. So that's a great way of reducing your margin costs, and it also reduces your risk. Yeah. And there's still great rewards on this. Uh, the power of spread, something we don't really go into much, uh, in depth in here. Uh, Brandon mentioned he will be doing some programs here coming up um, uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, what was it, April 7th and 8th? Uh, if you want yeah, more April information, was that? Yeah, no, April 7th and 8th. Yeah, you had it. Uh, if you want more information on that, I got his name up on the screen here. Obviously, it's Brandon Wendell, but the email is bwendell.cmt at gmail.com. That will get you uh, directly in touch with Brandon. He can tell you more information about these upcoming things. Of course, if you are Online Training Academy graduate, you still have XLT, so uh, you can probably prod him for more information about that. Uh, anything else going on in your world that you want to share with us? I know we're, we're past our allotted time here. I say a lot of time. Oh, we, I run the show, yeah. but I guess. <laughs> no, my wife My wife absolutely has been wonderful during this quarantine. She's uh, trying to protect me. Last night I woke up and she had a pillow over my face trying to protect me from the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. It's funny, I saw yeah, some funny pickup lines. She I'm blinking too loud. There's, oh, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's a funny pickup line that says, uh, if the coronavirus doesn't take you out, can I? Uh, that was a good one, too. Uh, but I'm, yeah, I spotted you from across the bar. Stay there. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> all right, Brandon. Well, thank you so much for coming to the program. I appreciate all the insights as usual. Uh, hopefully, we'll have you back on here maybe in another couple weeks or uh, you know, a little bit down the road and uh, share some more of your insights with us. We appreciate it. Get casual now. See, you can see it was a real tie, so yeah. there you go. There goes back the tie. Back to my quarantine outfit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friend. Take care. Have a good week. Yeah, thank you. Right, you too. Thanks. Everybody else out there, stay safe. All right, Wash your hands. Woo, stay clean. Uh, anything, if you guys would like to know more about uh, Brandon Wendell and his upcoming um, event, you can go to Brandon. Uh, oh, let me just let me bring it up there. I guess I got to bring that bad boy up. We'll, we'll bring it up there. Here is his full name on the screen. Uh, Brandon is going to be bwendell.cmt at gmail.com. That'll get you all the info about the program he was talking about, more info. And, of course, if you're Online Trading Academy XLT students, you can join Brandon and um, – and I'm, I'm there. Yes, there we go. I'm, I'm back. Sorry, guys. I apologize. 
So um, that's just the way to get in touch with Brandon. What I was going to talk about was what's happening tomorrow. There really isn't anything that's over the top crazy announcements. What was interesting was the numbers that came out today. You guys remember I was talking about the ADP non-farm employment change. Previous numbers there were supposed to be 179,000. That was what the expectation. That's what it was. Expectations were that we're going to come out at negative 150. And I was saying, look, I really think we could see a lot worse than 150, maybe even more than negative 200. We only came out at negative 27. So actually, that's a lot better than expected. Market still tanked today. Tomorrow, we have the unemployment claims. Now, it's a weekly announcement there. Remember last time we were expecting 1.6 million. We came out at 3.2 million. Right now, they're expecting 3.5 million. I personally think it's going to be a lot higher than that, um, just based off what's been happening over the last week with layoffs from companies around the world. So uh, we'll have to wait and see how that one pans out. That will do it for today's show, everybody. Yeah, yeah. let's see. Double mute. Uh, <laughs> Cool. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed today's show with Brandon. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to go and have John O'Donnell on the program. Hopefully, I won't screw things up by uh, unmuting my mic at the wrong time. Serenity now! Serenity now! Anyway, be careful out there. Have a great trading session. Uh, tomorrow should be rather interesting. I actually was looking for an opportunity to play a little bit of a bounce here on the S&P. We'll see if that happens in tonight's session. But overall, I am still bearish on these markets and think we'll probably see it continue down. If you liked the show today, go ahead and give us a little thumbs up, like button, subscribe, click the bell, whatever you do to... Uh, make these channels get better and more popular. I, I, we had about 88 people at our peak. I hopefully get to see more and more on this one. Uh, also, go to our iTunes. Subscribe to Trader Merlin on iTunes and on your YouTube channel. Send in your questions at TraderMerlin.com. Until then, happy trading, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care.